Welcome back to Electrified Reviews. Today, we're going to be talking about the Surface 604 Twist. Tailored to provide versatility in spades, the 2023 Surface 604 Twist is an e-bike designed to tackle both the challenges of urban commuting and off-road adventures. With a step-through frame, fat tires, and a solid set of features including a robust motor and an enduring battery, this e-bike could be your next best investment for multi-purpose biking. So let's dig into the details to see if the $2,399 price tag is justifiable. Oh, and it folds too, but we'll touch on that soon. Some of the key features here are the top speed. It comes in class two mode, so it goes up to 20 miles per hour, but it is unlockable to go about 26 miles per hour if you wanna get the extra six miles per hour. The drivetrain we have here is a nine speed SRAM X5. If you guys haven't ridden on SRAM, it's awesome, lots of fun. The frame is a step through and it folds. I told you we'd be getting to that a little bit sooner than I had expected, but yes, it also folds. The brakes we have here are Tektro Ariga hydraulic disc brakes. Honestly, couldn't be happier of seeing these on here. We saw those on the Surface 604 Bore Explorer, and that made sense on the bigger bike. Even though this is a smaller bike, kind of a different use case, we still have some sweet brakes here. The twist exudes an air of modern practicality from the get-go. Its 20 by 4 inch CST big boat tires are not just showpieces, they're designed to offer balanced performance on multiple terrain types. The step-through frame is inviting, and it seems particularly useful for city commuting, where frequent stops and starts are common. The Twist is equipped with a 500 watt hub motor and the Twist offers plenty of power for the city and enough grunt for light trail riding. The top speed of 20 miles per hour is more than adequate for most riders and if you're looking for more zip, as I often am, the bike can be unlocked to reach speeds of up to 26 miles per hour. With a 672 watt hour battery capacity, this bike is geared for long rides. Whether you're looking to use it for commuting, running errands, or just weekend excursions, you can expect substantial mileage before needing a recharge. The Service 604 branded 3.5 inch color LCD is informative and easy to read. It displays essential data like speed, battery life, and it even offers a USB type A charging port for your devices. A neat touch for those long rides. Neat. The step through frame is accessible and user friendly, making it easy to hop on and off the bike. The handlebars are designed for ergonomic comfort and are equipped with stitched faux leather grips that feel good in hand. Good in the hand, good in your hand, good in my hand. They feel good. The Selly Royale Ascenza Plus saddle offers comfort for extended periods. And we've ridden on some fat tire bikes that have, you know, no traditional suspension that have been a lot more jarring than this. So I honestly am kind of confused. So I keep talking about it because my brain's like, uh, this doesn't make sense why this would be so comfortable. But it is. And the aluminum alloy seat post allows for easy height adjustments, catering it to a wide range of rider sizes. Now here are some of the additional features that I think are dope on this bike. First is the integrated lights, both front and rear for enhanced safety. Fenders, 100 millimeter wide plastic fenders for added protection. The rear rack is welded right on with bungee loop, so this thing is ready to carry a ton of stuff. Now what are some of the things that could be improved here? Well, in my opinion, probably the weight. So it is 59 pounds with the battery installed, and that's not super heavy, but for some people it might be a little bit heavy. So definitely not ideal for people who wanna carry this thing up and down stairs, or might be a little bit on the, the weaker side of humanity, if you, if you know what I'm saying. It definitely was manageable for me, uh, not a huge deal. So if you're somebody who's younger, fit, you know, you can chuck this thing around and hey, maybe you want a challenge carrying this thing up and down some stairs. I don't know, but it could be a little bit lighter. And it was surprising when I had this and the Bore Explorer next to each other, the Bore Explorer is lighter, which doesn't make sense to me in my head, but that's the way it is. So what's the final verdict? Well, the Surface 604 Twist is a versatile and reliable e-bike that's well suited for both urban commuting and light trail riding. With its robust motor, solid battery life, and an array of extra features, it stands as a solid investment for those looking for a multi-purpose e-bike. And how do I know that this is a multi-purpose e-bike? Well, it's because I rode it around for a while. I took my camera. So let's go ahead and do the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test on the Twist, and we're gonna be taking on some bike trails maybe a little off-roading but maybe not we'll see we're not really set up for that with the rigid fork and the street slick tires so let's go ahead and get started now i've got the bike turned on and if you see me keep doing this while we're doing it it's because these are polarized that's polarized so i can't see anything now let's go ahead and let's pedal like a bike so we're starting off in pelsis level zero i didn't downshift of course because that is my mo 
Now, what, one of the things that I really love about this is the fact that we have the SRAM drivetrain on here. We have the SRAM shifter up front and a SRAM derailleur in the back. And as far as the gearing goes, that's third. Third feels pretty good. Fourth, and as you can hear, it's just shifting click, 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 right into place every single time. Smooth as butter. That's not too shabby. Now I do have the seat down just a little bit, so I don't have the right pedal geometry, but look at that, all the gears, super easy. But this is an e-bike, so let's go ahead and put in pedal assist level one. Getting some nice little bit of assistance there from the motor. Hit that throttle. Now one of the things we always check when we have a throttle is that if it is gonna be hindered by what level of pedal assist we're on, and with the twist, it is not. So it's gonna get up to its full class two speed of 20 miles per hour, even though right now we're in pedal assist, pedal assist, pedal assist level one. Now some of you might be asking like, is that a safety thing? And yes, let me explain. So if you were in a situation and let's say you're pedaling along and I'll do that right now. So we're kind of shifting down. We're just pedaling along, pedal assist level one, super easy breezy, just out for a little bit of a stroll. And let's say we need to hit a gap or we need to avoid something, whether that's a car, person, another bike or something like that. We can hit the throttle and we can get in and out of that situation, which is nice. Now, some people like when the pedal assist level can be controlled by that. It's, it, at some point, it's personal preference. But as a general rule of thumb, I'd rather have full access to the power on the throttle, no matter what level of pedal assist I'm in, for those reasons. And I like using a throttle, so there's that. Now, one thing that's nice about the twist, and there's a few things that are maybe even a twist on this platform, is that we've got the SRAM gear set. That's dope. We also have torque sensor. So if you guys don't know the difference between the two, cadence is just magnets. As the magnets spin around as you're pedaling, you're gonna get to go a certain speed. So right now I'm just sort of pedaling pretty light. I'm putting very little pressure on there, but as soon as I start to put a little bit more pressure on there, then I'm getting actually getting more power from the motor. It's not just me speeding up, I'm actually getting more assistance. So that just makes it a more connected, a, you know, more connected and fun ride in my opinion. Usually makes it better for climbing hills. And wouldn't you know it, we are here at the impossible hill climb hill right as we're talking about hill climbing abilities. So let's go ahead, put in pedal assist level five. We're gonna downshift, not upshift. Come on guys, pretend like I've used a shifter before. And let's go ahead, we're gonna get some speed. And let's hit this hill. Oh, just cruising right up it. Every single torque sensor bike I think that we've taken out on this hill has pretty much dominated, which has been, I wouldn't say a surprise, but it is interesting how stark the difference is. Oh yeah. So now I'll do a throttle only, get a little bit of speed here, and hit this hill. Definitely struggled a little bit there. Towards the end, we were losing some speed, but that it did a lot better than most of the e-bikes that we take on it. So now we're talking about top speed here with the throttle, it's gonna be 20 miles per hour. Get up to top speed pretty quick. I think, again, I'm just, I'm kind of guessing because polarization, you know? It's a very polarizing topic. <laughs> Humor. All right, so getting our 20 miles per hour pretty quickly here. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna shift up and we'll get to our top speed of 20 miles per hour with pedal assist. And yeah, so as far as the ride feel goes, for not having any suspension on it, it is pretty comfortable. Now, as you can tell, we can pan that 360 camera around. It's pretty smooth here. You know, no, no real ruts, no real bumps, nothing to really test out its off-road capabilities, but this is the environment that it was designed for, so this is the environment we're taking it on. So as you can tell, like I've been, I've been pedaling, but I wasn't putting as much force on it, so it starts to slow down a little bit, and then as soon as you start putting that torque into it, you get more power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little brake test right here at the end, in three, two, one. 
think that air I'm hearing is the saddle. I guess there's a little, some some air in there. That's pretty that's pretty nifty. Now I can definitely tell we're you know off-road, but it's nothing crazy. It's in some ruts and some bumps. Now let's keep it let's keep it off-road just to just to test that out a little bit more thoroughly. Now we're on a little bit of a bike path or maybe some sort of service road. Ooh, that looks like a bump. That's not bad. That saddle I feel like is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, which I did not expect. That is that is pretty interesting to me. Do another braking test here. Try not to skid the tires too much because as you skid the tires, you lose a little bit of control. Now that is kind of human nature. Something pops in your path, you want to just slam on the brakes and you do stop faster. And I only know that because we just did that with 10 e-bikes for a competition video. But when you start skidding, as soon as you start to lean and turn, you can skid out and you lose control. And that's really where the danger lies. Not that you can't stop faster, but it's only if it's a straight on and you're gonna slam on your brakes. And it might be different in different situations. It's just, we just did this yesterday. And so I'm, I looked at the numbers, right? You can watch the videos. You can head on over there, watch our top 10 fat tire e-bikes of 2023 video. We did a fun little competition about stopping. And so we did stop faster, but the caveat to that is we were doing it straight. So as soon as you start throwing a turn in there, you really are gonna lose a lot of your control. Now we're about to hit this bumpy patch right here. Let's see how she handles it. Not gonna slow down too much. Oh, still not bad. Guys, I'm sort of, sort of conflicted. I like to think that somewhat of an expert, been on a lot of, on a lot of bikes and you can look at something and go, ah, you know what? That one's not gonna be too comfortable. If not, it's not on the pavement. But I am pleasantly surprised with how it's handling. So it's one of those things where you really do get what you pay for. So even this bike, no suspension. We have all the portability of having a folding frame and it still is so, it's, it's very comfortable to ride. And so, yeah, you get what you pay for guys. That's a, it's a good life lesson for you. A little philosophy hour. Now let's talk about motor noise. So the motor noise is noticeable. Now it's very on par with all of the other motors that are at this wattage so it's not like wow this is loud and if you've been on a bike that is loud you you would know right e-bikes have a tendency to be sort of in the same ballpark when it comes to motor noise and unless you want to go direct drive or some other sort of like custom motor you're gonna have some motor wine in it and that's just that's just the way a lot of these motors are one more camera adjustment it's by no means the uh, most secure way to have a 360 cam on here, but just trying out something different, you know, get us a little, a little bit of a different angle. Maybe show my face a little bit more, some of the emotion. If I get sad, I could be like, if I get happy, I could be like, you know. But well, you know, this isn't an acting class. This is, this is e-bikes. The flexibility or the maneuverability of these 20-inch tires are pretty awesome kind of going back to the top 10 fat tire e-bikes video we did there is definitely a difference between the maneuverability of a 20 inch versus a 26 inch fat tire e-bike there's not really much getting around it it's physics gravity einstein whatever but uh yeah being able to just have this flexibility to really carve and feel like i'm in control the whole time on these pavements is pretty pretty dope go ahead and do a little bit of a little bit off-road here, nothing too crazy, just a little, just a little shootout. Got a little bump here. Okay, well, that was my fault. I, I hit a, almost a curb, basically, a dirt curb. And we're cruising. Now, when it did hit some of that loamy, sandy area, it did start to get a little bit squirrely, but that's what we expect from street tires. Yeah, I'm still I'm still kind of uh, still kind of stuck on the on the comfort and the quality of this folding e-bike. Folding e-bikes are not known to be quality rides in the sense that they're sort of looking more at portability than say like traditional bike geometry. But this one 
great. Even though I've got I've got the seat probably a little bit lower than I would if I was looking for a perfect pedal geometry. Yeah, maybe by about, I don't know, maybe about like an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. I'm mainly doing that so I get a better angle on the camera here. It's pretty sweet. Well guys, I think that is gonna do it for our ride test and our full review on the twist from Surface 604. If you guys want to know more about them, I'll have a link to Surface 604's Surface 604's is. I'll figure that one out. I'm gonna have a link to their website, however you pronounce the brand, and then an apostrophe at the end of it. And if you guys have any questions specifically for me, anything I didn't cover, comments, corrections, just want to say hey, great job. Let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one.